CEO of CMHC, Evan Sedal, wrote a letter to Canadian lenders warning them to reconsider offering high-risk mortgages. The country's real estate sector is among one of the few spaces that has been showing strength amid the pandemic, but a possible downturn may lie ahead, warns the CMHC. Joining me now to discuss the risks is Gord Nixon. He's the former CEO, of course, of the Royal Bank of Canada, steered the bank through the 0809 financial crisis and is currently the chair of BCE, which is our parent company, serves on the board of both BlackRock and George Weston. Gord, thank you so much for being with us. It was a three-page letter that Evan Sedal penned, uh, fairly candid in what he was asking for. What was your take when you read it? Uh, I must say I was a little surprised. I don't think I've ever uh, seen or received a letter uh, like that. I, I think the the um, intent and concern is, is certainly real. I think Evan, Evan has been quite... Um, bearish, I would say, on the Canadian real estate market for quite some time. Um, and, um, you know, certainly has an expectation that there's going to be a significant decline in, in prices. I think he testified 18 to 20 percent and a significant increase in deferrals. He obviously has a legitimate concern. Um, there's obviously different views in the market and, and um, you know, CMHC uh, competitors are, um, you know, certainly uh, um, being more aggressive, and I think um, you know he's raising a concern that if there is a significant downturn, um, you know it'll have an impact on borrowers. But uh, I, you know I would say that the the Canadian mortgage market is 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 you know served Canada very well because it has always been you know a very responsible uh, marketplace. Um, I think the banks have always you know tried to get the right blend between. Facilitating home ownership, first-time home ownership, and uh, uh, and uh, facilitating their their customers' ability to buy homes uh, with uh, the mitigation of risk, and I think they've done a pretty good job. So, um, I, you know, I would say the letter was probably a little bit extreme and alarmist, but uh, you know, having said that, you know, who knows what the impact of COVID is going to be, um, you know, a year out from now, and if we do, you know, have a, a sustained period of high unemployment. Uh, it'll certainly cause pressure on um, uh, on uh, home uh, homeowners because uh, you know the unemployment rate I still think is the most important statistic with respect to uh, uh, to mortgage uh, defaults and mortgage deferrals. Um, you know, much more important even than debt, um, debt to um, uh, to income uh, ratios, which which are certainly meaningful. But at the end of the day, if people are employed and they have the ability to pay their mortgages. Um, you know, they generally do so. So I, I think that's something that, that we have to watch very carefully. It sounds like you disagree uh, with the premise on two fronts. One, the extent of uh, the declines we could see in the housing market. And, and two, that these lenders are, in fact, engaging in risky practices. Maybe you could elaborate on, on that latter one, do you think that banks uh, and lenders and, and alternative mortgage insurers have been prudent and that there there isn't the problem that Sadal is underlying? Yeah, I mean, I think those two points you just raised are directly correlated. I mean, if you believe that real estate markets are going to decline significantly and uh, uh, deferral rates are going to rise to, um, you know, astronomical historical levels, um, you know, then you could argue that any lending is uh, is uh, aggressive at this juncture. But I think that that you know many people in the marketplace don't believe that that will be the case. I mean, we continue to see a fairly strong, you know, real estate market in Canada. Um, you know, it will be sectoral. I mean, there'll be parts of the country that'll be um, impacted negatively more than others. But if you look at, you know, some of the key markets like Toronto and Vancouver and, you know, major cities, the markets continue to be to be quite robust and, and, and quite solid. I, I think the challenge, and I know that, that, that Evan and, and others are, are struggling with this, is so much will be dictated on the outcome of the health outcomes with respect to COVID. I mean, if we do end up with you know, therapeutics or a vaccine, or we, we are able to live uh, with COVID in a much more um, um, normalized way, then, you know, that will, you know, be a very different economic result than if we have a, you know, we don't have uh, a vaccine for an extended period of time and we have a significant second wave and we go back into lockdown. So, 
it's hard to separate, you know, health uh, outcomes from economic outcomes. And uh, but in terms of the overall marketplace, there's you know most economists tend to be, uh, I would say, less bearish than the the views of CMHC. And I think you're seeing that activity in the marketplace from the other um, mortgage insurers who, who are being more aggressive. Um, you know, and I think the banks, you know, generally have fairly conservative policies uh, uh, to begin with. I mean, firstly, you know, you're talking about the insured sector of the market. When you go from away from the insured sector of the markets, the banks tend to be, you know, fairly conservative and fairly responsible. So I think, you know, currently, um, you know, things that the marketplace looks reasonably solid, but as I say, certainly it could t take a turn for the worst depending on, on, on health outcomes. And I think what e Evan and CMHC are, are, you know, they're certainly forecasting a much more negative outcome than, than, than others are, and I hope they're not correct, um, And um, but, you know, only time will tell. Well, it, it sounds like you're saying that that is, is probably how these lenders are receiving the message as well. So, it, I mean, if you were still in this role and you received a letter like this, or you imagine uh, your your former colleagues receiving a letter like this, it sounds like it's not going to lead to any change. Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to 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 predict. I mean, I think people will certainly pay attention to the letter. I think the one thing that uh, was interesting in the letter was sort of the admission that there's a significant decline in CMHC market share. Um, and you know, there's really a request that that you know we would we, we don't want to see that market share decline much further. You know, I think the banks will pay a lot of attention to that. I think they'll review their policies. They'll they'll take a look at you know their activity with CMHC and the others other insurers. And, and, and I think at the margin there will certainly be some action uh, on behalf of the banks. Um, but um, you know, I, I I I would be very surprised if the bank and industry were to say, okay, we're no longer going to, you know, deal with the other insurers because their policies are too aggressive in terms of the insurance they are providing. As I say, I mean, I think they'll try to get the right balance between, you know, doing the right thing, you know, being responsible, but at the same time facilitating home ownership. I mean, there are a lot of people out there who you know, want to buy homes. And it's actually been probably incurred by COVID because, you know, people are traveling less, um, you know, they're less um, wanting to, to, to be in, in rental uh, uh, facilities, uh, even condos probably. They're, you know, single family home ownership is certainly something that uh, that is, uh, you know, increased in terms of demand. So you want to get that balance right. Um, so, you no, know, I don't think the banks will ignore the letter. I think they will pay attention to it and they will review their policies. And I think at the margin it will have an impact. Uh, but I don't think it's going to stop the banks from dealing with other mortgage insurers. And, uh, you know, the, the, the views and the, the, the policies of those other insurers, as long as they comply with, you know, Canadian rules and regulations, probably are unlikely to change. 